Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is a film from a director known as much for the brilliance of his films as for the drama in his private life. It is from a period when he was emerging as a widely celebrated auteur, only a few years after moving from his native Poland to Britain. It takes on the difficult subject of mental illness, portraying it in, a, in an immersive way and stars one of the greatest of international actresses. It is Repulsion from 1965. The film's story was developed by director Roman Polanski and Jared Bark. They wrote an outline in Paris and set it in London where Polanski had recently moved. It was inspired by a woman both of them knew uh, and was, uh, who was later diagnosed with schizophrenia. Polanski and Bark pitched their film to numerous studios including British Line and Paramount, but they passed on the project. It was picked up by Compton Films, a small English-based studio known for making exploitation films and soft-core pornography. Its executives, Michael Klinger and Tony Tenser, were impressed by the screenplay and agreed to both produce and distribute the film. When casting, Polanski announced that the actress he required would have to be an angel with a slightly soiled halo. So it's no surprise that the pivotal role of Carol went to Catherine Deneuve, who had already worked with Roger Vadim, uh, Jacques Demy, uh, and would go on to work with Louis Benoit and Francois Truffaut, often portraying beautiful women with disturbing character traits. Deneuve has been at pains to point out that she and Carol had very different personalities. The film includes a number of firsts. It is Polanski's first English language film and features the first depiction of female orgasm using only sound effects to be passed by the British Board of Film Censors. It is unusual, especially for the films of the same period, for featuring a female killer in a central role as it explores the repulsion Carol feels about heterosexuality while being pursued by a male suitor. The film's backstory includes the suggestion that Carol's neuroses and breakdown are the result of childhood sexual abuse, and the reason her sister's boyfriend Michael greatly provokes her at the beginning of the film. Carol's conflict is based on her refusal to conf conform to societal expectations of femininity, with the film increasingly adopting her perspective and employing dream sequences which are particularly intense. Repulsion was considered the first instalment of Polanski's Apartment Trilogy, followed by Rosemary's Baby in 68 and The Tenet in 1976, both of which are horror films that also take place in primarily inside apartment buildings. Shot on a mod modest budget of £65,000, exterior sequences were shot in South Kensington in London and interiors of Carol and Helen's mansion flat shot at Twickenham Studios. To create an authentic appearance, art director Seamus Flannery and cinematographer Gilbert Taylor photographed the interiors of numerous flats shared by young women in a seedy section of South Kensington. Taylor had recently worked on Dr. Strangelove and A Hard Day's Night, and all three films benefit from his exceptional black and white cinematography. The production eventually went £30,000 over budget, partly due to Polanski's perfectionism and his tendency to do multiple reshoots. During production, tensions flared between Polanski and some of the cast because of the way he treated Yvonne Furneaux, uh, intentionally driving someone he knew was very nice to behave more like her character, a bitch. Also, Ian Hendry, who played Michael, frequently returned after lunch, intoxicated, making film, uh, filming difficult. First released in London in June of 1965, it met with mostly positive reviews. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times said Repulsion was an absolute knockout of a movie. Jim Emerson in the Chicago Sun-Times included the film in his list of 102 movies you must see before anything else. In 1965, the film won the Silver Bear at Berlin, Polanski won the Fapresi Prize from the International Federation of Film Critics, and Gilbert Taylor was nominated for, for a BAFTA for his black and white cinematography. On its release to the DVD, Dave Keir of the New York Times wrote, Mr. Polanski uses slow camera movements, a soundtrack carefully composed of distracting repetitive noises, and explicitly expressionistic effects, to to depict a plausible schizophrenic episode. It is one of the 1001 movies you must see before you die and was voted by Premiere as one of the 25 most dangerous movies. Lots of good reasons to watch this film. Watching the central character lose her mind while having an insight into what she is seeing and thinking is true horror. A young Catherine Deneuve is brilliant as a beautiful woman on a downward spiral that has been a long time coming. The black and white photography is fabulous and the special effects are disturbing which is the, their purpose. For those who are tired of the tedious repetition and predictability of modern horror films, this is a film for you. So, what I suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, 
definitely click on and watch it. Uh, we'd love you to come back as always. Let us know what your thoughts are about the film and whether you'd recommend it for others as well. And then we're back in the not too distant future for our next classic films review. Catch you next time.